Hey everybody, welcome back, and if you're just checking this channel out for the first time, welcome. In this video series, we're developing a SimCity clone using JavaScript and 3.js, which is a 3D library for JavaScript. In the last video, we worked on a few optimizations to our code. In this video, we're going to have a bit more fun, and we're going to work on making our city interactive so that we can select buildings and tiles. In order to implement interactivity, we need to figure out which object the user selected solely from where they clicked on the screen. This is accomplished through a process called ray casting. With ray casting, you shoot a ray out of the camera towards the scene to wherever the user clicked. Then return whichever object gets hit by the ray first. To implement ray casting, let's first go into our scene file and let's add a few variables at the top here. So we need to define our raycaster object, which is part of the 3JS library. We also need to define a two-dimensional vector, which will store the normalized mouse position. And finally, we need to keep track of the currently selected object. So that will start off as undefined. We're going to be adding additional code to our scene in the onMouseDown function. So after we've called the camera on mouse down method, let's compute the normalized mouse position. This just means that the X and Y components are between negative one and one. And this is needed by the raycaster in order to determine where the users clicked within the screen. So for the normalized X position, we'll take the mouse X position that we get in the event data, and we'll divide it by the width of our render element. And we need to multiply that by two and subtract one to get it between negative one and one. Because this value will be between zero and one. If you multiply that by two, it'll be between zero and two. And then subtracting one, it'll be between negative one and one. So we need to do the same thing for the y position. Client y this time, and then the height of the render element or should say the height of the element that we're rendering to. But in this case, we need to negate it. So we'll put a minus here and that will make this a plus. Okay, next we need to update the raycaster with the new mouse position. The mouse position combined with the camera fully describes the ray that we are casting into the scene. So we can do that by calling set from camera on our raycaster. And then we'll pass in the 2D coordinates of the mouse and normalized device coordinates. This is what we just calculated. So we'll pass that in. And then we need to pass in our camera object. So that is the camera property of our camera object here. Then we need to compute the intersection between the ray and the objects in our scene. We'll create a new variable called intersections, and then we'll call the intersect objects method on a raycaster. So we need to pass in an array of objects that we want to check for intersection with our ray. So that will just be the children of our scene. And we don't want that to be recursive. So we'll set that to false. So this will return an array of intersections sorted by distance with the closest object being the first in the list. And this is the one that we care about. So we'll need to check if any intersections were found. Just check that by seeing if the length of our intersections array is greater than zero. And we'll test this out by printing the first intersection to the console. So let's open the browser and test what we have so far. So let's pull up the console with F12, do a quick refresh. Now if I click on something, you can see it prints all the information about the object to the console. So we can't do anything with this quite yet, but this lets us know that our intersection code is actually working and it's intersecting with our objects correctly. So let's go back to the code. So to make things a bit easier to see, let's highlight our objects when we click on them. We'll first get the selected object. We'll get the first intersection and then access the object property on that. And then we want to get the material of our selected object. And then we want to modify the emissive property. And this is a color that will be added onto the object's current color. So we'll set the hex value and we'll add on gray. So that will just make the objects lighter when we select them. 
And the last thing we need to do is unselect the previously selected object. So if there currently is a selected object, then we want to set the MSF property of that to zero. Okay, so going back to the browser, if I click on a building here, you can see it's now highlighted. If I click on another, it unhighlights that one and selects this one. And this also works for our grass tiles as well. We can now interact with and select meshes in our scene, but we have no way of determining the specific X and Y coordinates of the thing that we clicked on. Remember, a mesh is just a 3D representation that we use for rendering. We need these coordinates so we can look up the information about that tile in our city data model and do things like displaying information about that tile to the user or allowing the user to modify that tile, such as removing a building or rezoning it. So if you remember from the last video, there's actually a property on our mesh objects that we can use to store additional metadata with the object, and that's the user data property. So let's go into our assets file and modify our meshes so that they include the X and Y coordinates of the tile corresponding to that mesh. And we'll store that in the user data. All we need to do is add the X and Y coordinates as properties here. We're already passing that in into our factory function. We'll just copy and paste this for the rest of them. Now going back to our scene, rather than printing out the object to the console, delete this, add a new log statement down here. So I'm going to print the user data for the selected object. So that should show the X and Y coordinates of our objects when we click on them. If I click on this object, you can see the X and Y coordinates are 2 and 11. I click on this building, 8 and 2. If you click on our grass, we get the x and y coordinates for that. So we can use these x and y coordinates now to map back to our data model and pull up information about that building or terrain that we clicked on. So our scene is completely segregated from our data model by design. So we need to notify our game object that an object was selected so it can perform a lookup on our data model using the x and y coordinates of the thing that we clicked on. So let's start by defining a new variable. And we'll call that on object selected. And this is actually going to be a reference to a function that will be called when an object is selected. It's so going back to our on mouse down function. We'll first check to see if on object selected has a value. If it does, then we will call this function and we'll pass in the selected object. Let's make sure we turn on object selected as part of our scene object. Now let's go into our game and create a handler for this. So after we initialize our scene, let's set on object selected to this method. So we pass in the selected object as the only argument. Let's log the selected object. So like we said before, we also wanted to do a lookup on our data model. So we can extract the X and Y coordinates from our selected object's user data. And then we'll get the tile at that location. And then we will print that tile data to the console. One final thing that we need to do is to bind our mouse event handlers to the scene object itself. So we can do that by calling the bind method and passing in the scene object. And we'll apply that to the on mouse up and on mouse move event handlers. So the reason that we need to do this is because these event handlers are called by the HTML document. If we don't bind the method to the scene, this will refer to the HTML document instead, which obviously doesn't have the on object selected property that we need. Let's go to the browser now and see if our on object selected event handler works. So if I click on this building, can ignore this first line here. This is the log statement from our scene. So the first log statement is the selected object itself. So this is all the data that goes along with our mesh. The next one is the tile data that we printed. So we can see it has the, the building ID, the terrain ID, and the X and Y coordinates at that tile. And we don't have any other data in our data model right now, 
but eventually we'll store things like the crime levels, the pollution levels, and whether the tile has road access, power, things like that. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Now that we have the ability to interact with our city, in the next video we'll build out a crude UI so we can start placing roads and zones in our city. Thanks for tuning in. If you're enjoying this video series, please don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. If you have any ideas for features you would like to see in the game, feel free to leave it in the comments. And until next time, take care everyone.